Welcome to the notes on matter and atoms. Because this is your first official online course notes, I want to talk about some of the tools that are going to be effective for you here. First is video playback tools. As you're playing this video, you might want to make your video full screen. It allows you to see it a lot easier. The full screen button is found in the lower right hand corner of this YouTube video. Another thing that's useful is video bookmarks. If you scrub along the video timeline, you'll notice it's divided up into sections and each of these sections has a little title on them. That allows you to easily find a specific part, which is also really useful if you're ever coming back. And I do recommend you come back and review this video um, for different sections, such as practice problems or main definitions. Closed captioning is available for those who are experiencing deafness or hard of hearing, um, or even if you're not, it's great sometimes to have the words strewn across the bottom that you can follow along with. You can also adjust the playback speed. You can make the video go a little bit faster, which means you're taking a little bit less time as you watch the video. But don't forget to pause the video at important points to take notes or to uh, write down your thoughts and connections. Finally, the notes, these specific slides are linked in this assignment that you can find in the attached link section. You can download these notes, you can print them to write on them. However, I don't recommend you bypass this video and just read through the notes because you're going to miss essential points that I might say out loud. Um, and part of the interactiveness is to actually watch this video. Speaking of taking notes, there are some really good effective ways of taking notes. And you may be like me and have been taking notes the same way your entire school experience, but there is actually a scientifically proven method of better note taking. So let me explain what you do. If you divide your notebook page up into multiple sections, we're not only passively taking notes, but we're gonna actively interact with the notes. Remember KCQ, key terms, connections, and questions. Well, over here on the right hand side, the upper right hand side, this is where you're going to add the title of the notes and the essential question, which I'll give to you in a moment. But you're also going to take your essential notes. This is what you're used to doing. I would abbreviate notes as much as possible, write things down in bullet points, include drawing symbols and equations. The extra part over here to the left, this is where we're going to add key terms, connections and questions. By writing key terms, it's almost like you're adding little bookmarks in your own notes that you can easily find the main ideas and key terms. But it's also a good idea to make connections when you're going through the notes and you think about how this relates to other things you may already know, write those in there to make those connections. Finally, is you can also ask questions in this section. That's a good idea, especially as you're going along, so you know you need to go back and seek answers to those questions to make sure you fully understand the material. The bottom section of these notes are where you're going to do a summary. This is where you're going to answer that essential question that we asked at the very beginning of the notes in a deep way with examples and diagrams and things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Here is the essential question for this specific set of notes. Remember, the essential question is what we're trying to focus on, and it's not something we're going to easily answer. It's going to take a little bit of depth. So as we go through, make sure you are referring back to this question. That way we can answer it in a deep way. What does matter and what role do atoms play? Well, before we can answer that question, I want to talk a little bit about what chemistry is. Take a look at this diagram or this flow chart over here on the right. Notice that chem chemistry is the central science of all these other types of science. The reason for that is, is chemistry is fundamental. The things we need to know in chemistry apply to all these different sciences, including geology, biology, medicine, physics. Chemistry is the study of matter, and matter is in everything. We also study the properties of matter, changes of matter, and how matter interacts with other pieces of matter. But what is matter? Well, matter is classified as anything that could be weighed and takes up space. Look around you on your desk right now. All of those tangible things you see that could be weighed, that take up space on your desks, are pieces of matter. Here I have in my chart a bunch of examples of pieces of matter, like a, like gas in the atmosphere, such as clouds or a battery or a virus. Now things on the right over here are not matter. They can't be weighed. They don't take up space. Things like sound or feelings or thoughts, electricity, those are not matter because they don't fall into our classification of matter. This fire right here is kind of striding the line between matter and not matter. That's because the wood is matter. 
but the heat and the flames that come off the wood is not matter. It's more energy. I want to delve further into our two statements, can be weighed. Scientifically, when we weigh something, we should be looking for its mass or the quantity of particles of matter. We can mass out matter by measuring it using a digital balance or regular balance or a scale. And typically we measure it in units of grams. When something takes up space, what we're really talking about is its volume. Now we can measure volume using a rule, ruler, remember length times width times height, but not everything is as easy or as square as that. So other ways we can measure it are using a graduated cylinder and we measure it in milliliters. If it's a liquid, we can just chuck the liquid in a graduated cylinder and measure the spot it reached in the graduated cylinder. Solids are a little bit more complicated, but it's kind of neat the way we do it. We throw a liquid in a graduated cylinder, then we throw our solid object in the liquid and find how much the liquid is displaced. That's the volume of a solid. All right, so what gives matter mass and volume? Well, atoms. Atoms are the building blocks of matter. I like to think of atoms as the Legos of matter. Well, what are Legos good for? Well, you can build tons of stuff with Legos. Same thing with atoms. Anything that's made out of matter or anything that is matter is made out of atoms. They're the smallest piece of matter with distinct properties. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, atoms, and here's a picture of an atom or a stereotypical atom. Atoms can be distinguished one from another. There are different types of atoms, which we're going to talk about throughout this module. But atoms are made of even smaller pieces. Quarks, for example, are these pieces in the middle. These spheres in the middle are made out of quarks. Now, one quark to a different quark, there's really no difference between the two. They're indistinguishable. But atoms are the smallest piece of matter that can be distinguished one from another. Now, atoms are the building blocks. Atoms make up elements. If you look up here, we've simplified these atoms into spheres, but atoms make up elements. Now, if we take a bunch of different elements and put them together, we can make up molecules. And if we take a bunch of molecules and put them together, we can make a whole bunch of things such as DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. In fact, this little adenine right here, this line is a simplified form of this molecule you're seeing right here. DNA can be compacted into chromosomes, and chromosomes are found inside the nucleus or the center of a biological cell. If we put a bunch of cells together, we can make organs, parts of our body, and if we put a bunch of organs together, we can make whole entire humans. So see, atoms are the building blocks of matter, and they're very tiny, and they make up all these things. That leads us to the end of our notes. Let's take a moment right now, and I would recommend interacting with your notes by rereading them and highlighting key terms, underline important concepts. Take time to ask questions and seek answers to your question. And don't forget to summarize that essential question at the bottom of your page. All right, good luck.